There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Before I start talking about coordinate and covalent bonds, I want to quickly cover what a covalent bond actually is. We did it in year 11, I mean, you would have covered it roughly in year 11, but I'll quickly go over it again in terms of what a covalent bond actually is. Now, it has three parts to its name. Co stands for cooperation. It doesn't stand for cooperation, but it has something to do with cooperation, as in co as in sharing, so something, they're sharing something. Valent comes from the word valence electrons, or it's supposed to refer to valence electrons. And obviously bond means that they're coming together, it's right? so a bond is they're sticking together, and the reason why they're sticking together is because they're sharing valence electrons. I'll go over what that means in a bit more detail with an example. So let's say we have oxygen. Oxygen has the atomic number of eight, and anything when it comes to atomic number, if we know it has eight, that means it has also has eight protons because the atomic number equals the number of protons. So in the nucleus, both of these oxygen atoms have eight protons, and we know that they must have eight electrons if they have eight protons, because an atom is neutral, therefore the number of protons and electrons have to be equal. But in terms of where those electrons are, we have two electrons, which are always going to be in the first shell, and that means that it leaves us six electrons, which come in the outer shell, so it's the outer shell electrons. Another word for the outer shell electrons are the valence electrons. So these six electrons are oxygen's valence electrons. So here I've just drawn not all of the electrons, but just the valence electrons for both of these oxygen atoms. And what all atoms want is they want to have eight valence electrons in the outer shell. So they're going to be happy, they're going to be stable when they have eight valence electrons. But at the moment, both of these oxygen atoms have only six. So what could they do? Well, they can come together. So for example, this oxygen atom can come closer to the other oxygen atom. And what they could do is they could simply share their electrons, right? So if they share these electrons, these here, that means here they have four, and then this one has four plus one, two, three, four. So four plus four, that means this one now has eight valence electrons. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one also has eight valence electrons. So now both of these are stable, and this we also represent like so. Each one of these bonds here refers to two electrons being shared. So in total we share four electrons, which is the same as this loose dot structure representation, four in the middle. And that's a covalent bond. A covalent bond is all about sharing electrons. And they share electrons to make sure that each atom has eight valence electrons in their outer shell. Or in this case, just a full shell. Hydrogen is not eight, but most other ones have eight or want to get to eight valence electrons. So what do we know about covalent bonds? Well, it's all about sharing valence electrons, right? So it's a bond that forms because they want to share their valence electrons. And the reason why is to get those eight electrons. It's also an intermolecular bond. Not actually, not intermolecular. It's meant to be an intramolecular. Intramolecular. That's what I call a brain freeze. So an intramolecular means that it's actually within within an atom. N molecule. So here, for example, they're sharing, this is one molecule, and they're sharing it within a molecule, whereas intermolecular, so the opposite of intramolecular, is between molecules. Right? So hydrogen bonding, dispersion forces, these are intermolecular, intramolecular is within an actual molecule. And we also know that they occur between nonmetals. So for example, these are two oxygen atoms, they're nonmetals, and if something, an bond that occurs between a metal and a non-metal is different. It's often ionic bonds, not covalent bonds. Covalent bonds happen between non-metals. And they usually also happen between atoms. So atoms of non-metals, not ions as well. All right, so that's what we know about a covalent bond. Right? It's sharing electrons to get to eight um, electrons each, to have a full outer shell, whatever their outer shell is. And now I'm going to talk about the actual or coordinate covalent bond, because Doppler says describe the formation of a coordinate covalent bond. So we need to talk about what that actually is. And I'm quickly going to correct this as well. Again, these are my brain freezes. I write something which I don't actually want to write. This is also meant to be intra. All right, so we've got a coordinate covalent bond. What is the difference between a covalent bond and a coordinate covalent bond? 
Well, there are quite a few similarities. So, for example, it is an intramolecular bond, just like covalent bonds. They occur between atoms of nonmetals, but I've also added ions here. So there's a bit of difference there. And also electrons are shared, but one member does not share. So what does that mean? So for example, let's say we have, this here is going to be ozone. So this is O3, as opposed to what I just drew earlier. This is O3, what I drew earlier was O2, that was um, just normal oxygen, molecular oxygen gas. So what's gonna happen is they're gonna come together. Right? They wanna share their electrons, but not all of them are gonna share their electrons. So what's gonna happen is these guys, right? I'm going to share the electrons just like what happened beforehand, which means that this is going to be your covalent bond, your regular covalent bond. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, sharing these two, so six, seven, eight. This one has eight electrons. It's happy, it doesn't want to grab any more. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one also has eight electrons. It doesn't want to do anything else. It's happy. So how, if now they're all happy, how do we get this one to attach to the other electron, the other, sorry, the oxygen atom? That doesn't make any sense. That we wouldn't want to share electrons because then we'd have 10 electrons, which would be too many. So what's happening here? Well, what's going to happen is this one's going to come closer and it's going to share its electrons. So these electrons will basically be shared with this oxygen, but the other, this one is not giving anything. So this one is not giving, it's just receiving. It's not giving anything in terms of the sharing back, right? So it's a one way sharing. The other one is not giving anything back. So now that means this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one also has eight electrons. And this one doesn't get any more, right? So it still has these eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It didn't get any electrons from the other one. So now each have eight electrons. And that's the idea of a coordinate covalent bond. It's a bit different to covalent bonds because a covalent bond, a normal regular covalent bond, every single atom shares something. Whereas in a coordinate covalent bond, one member might not be sharing or maybe sometimes more than one, but it's probably, usually just one member doesn't share. And the way we represent that, remember oxygen, we would represent like this. This would be your covalent bond. And this ozone, if you wanted to draw on this kind of structure, what we do is we draw the oxygen atoms. Here we have the normal bond, the double bond, which is this one here. And here we have just draw an arrow. And what all that means is that this one is sharing these two electrons with the other one. But it's, an, it's only it's a one-way traffic. The other one doesn't share anything back, and this means that everyone has eight electrons still. And this is how you represent a coordinate covalent bond, right? So this is the coordinate covalent bond. So I'll quickly go over now what this all this means again. So electrons are shared, but one member sometimes it could be more than one. But electrons are shared, but one member does not share. Right? So it receives, but it does not share anything back. Again, it's an intramolecular bond as well because this happens between the molecule, right? This is an ozone molecule. And this happens inside the actual molecule, so it's an intramolecular bond. And it occurs between atoms. These are, in this case, they're all atoms, but it also can occur between ions. And I'll talk about this in the next video. And I'll give you an example of where this happens. One example would be the ammonium ion, but it can occur between atoms or ions, but it still has to be of nonmetals themselves, right? So your hydrogens or some of the other ones, not your metals or your semi-metals. So quickly cover again how we have to describe the formation of the covalent bond. With the formation of covalent bond, you'll have basically two atoms coming to that third atom. They all come together. One atom is going to share the electrons with the other atom, just like, like it usually does. Right? In this case, you've got a covalent bond forming. Whereas the third, in this case, in this example, the third atom, receives two electrons, it shares these two electrons, but doesn't share anything back. But that happens to make sure that every one of those has eight electrons. Because otherwise there would be, someone might have 10 electrons, which would defeat the purpose, right? So in this case, they all have eight electrons, they're all happy, and we have ozone being formed. And all seems to be good. And this is how we represent that in terms of the Lewis dot structure, or in this case, the sort of dash structure, as opposed to normal oxygen, which would be represented like this. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.